The desperate search for a missing Colorado girl may now be centered halfway across the country here in Maine. Yeah, not one, but at least two people say they spotted a child in Maine matching Jessica Ridgway's description. News 13's Adrian Stein joins us live in the studio with these developing details. And Adrian, today's day six in the search for this child. You're right, day six it is. And take a really good look right here. This is 10 year old Jessica Ridgway. She disappeared while on her way to school last week in Colorado. And now at least a pair of possible sightings in Maine Maine could bring new hope to finding her alive. Dexter police say one of the possible sightings happened in Dexter. They say there are other similar calls coming in from nearby Harmony. Ridgeway seemingly vanished last Friday while on her way to school in Westminster, Colorado. Dexter police say a woman reported seeing a girl who looks like her in a light blue station wagon on Sunday in Dexter. They say other reports with similar descriptions came in from Harmony around that same time. The caller in Dexter says she may have spotted the girl on Sunday, but didn't call police until yesterday when she learned about the Amber Alert online. Police say the Internet and social media could be crucial to cracking this case. We ask you to keep pushing that, keep tweeting, posting comments on Facebook, sending text messages to your friend. That is a critical point and, and importance in the investigation in that it gets her name and her picture out to the community. Westminster police say the hashtag Jessica Ridgeway was the biggest trending topic on Twitter at one point today, which has helped in the nationwide search. Police have put out an alert for a light blue mid 90 station wagon with what they're calling fancy five spoke chrome wheels possibly with Colorado plates. And if you think you have any information on this case, police do want to hear from you immediately. Reporting live in the studio, Adrian Stein, News 13. Well, I can hope they find her soon. Thanks, Adrian. Well, a judge in York County lifts a gag order on the Kenny Bunk prostitution case. This means some of the evidence that has been sealed may soon be available to the public. But when? Our Steve Roldan has been following this story closely. He joins us live outside the courthouse in Biddeford. Steve? Well, Kim, that is the big question right now with no real answer. We've been out here all day long waiting for some of those documents to be released, but we're told the judge has to sign off on that request, which as of right now has not happened. I can tell you just yesterday, the judge in the case denied a motion for confidentiality that would have kept key documents in this case, including a client list confidential. She said Mainers are entitled to know the details of this case. It happened during the arraignment of Mark Strong Sr. and Alexis Wright, who both pled not guilty to over 160 combined counts between both of them. The prosecution says both were running a prostitution operation out of a Zumba studio in Kennebunk and that encounters with clients were secretly recorded. Now, investigators say Wright kept a client list of customers, a list we're told has about over 120 names on it. Strong's attorney says many of those people in the list are prominent people in the community. That list may be included in the documents that are expected to be made public once the judge is officially received. The judge's request rather is officially received here at the main district court, which could happen at any time. So no real timeline on that. But we are told that Kenny Bunk police are prosecuting people on these lists and issuing summons. So they expect to release some of the first names off of this list as soon as this Friday. That's the latest live here in Biddeford. Steve rolled on. News 13, back to you. All right, we'll follow any new developments, Steve. Thanks. Oh, the surprise of a lifetime. That's what a boy in Wells got in gym class this afternoon. Eight-year-old Heath McHugh had no idea his dad, on leave from Afghanistan, would be stopping by for a visit. News 13's Marissa Bodner was there, and she joins us now live with the story. Marissa? Kim and Greg, the kids thought news crews were there for a segment on yoga and nutrition in gym class. They really had no idea what an emotional scene was about to unfold and just one day after Heath's eighth birthday. Now Heath's yeah. dad, CW3 <laughs> Donnie McHugh, has been with the Army for 14 years. He's been on leave at his home in Hawaii, but because of flight changes, delays, and that leave being cut short, he wasn't sure if or when he'd get to see his son before heading back to Afghanistan. Heath's grandparents teamed up with his school to make it all happen. Gym class took quite a twist when Heath saw his dad step out from behind the curtain. In disbelief, he simply said, that's my dad. I get to see my dad. Then we all started crying. It was just great. So he's taking off now for a little time with his dad and um, We'll hear all about it, I'm sure, tomorrow. Okay. 
There were tears all around, but lots of smiles too. Father and son have just about 24 hours together before McHugh is due back in Afghanistan. They plan to do plenty of belated birthday celebrating. He hopes that will be at Chuck E. Cheese. Kim and Greg? <laughs> I'm guessing he gets whatever I he wants. So. They'll right. make that count. Thank you, Marissa. Mm -hmm. Members of Congress tonight honor the main state trooper who stopped a wrong way driver in Portland. Yeah, we showed you that dash cam video before. It's worth a second look. Here's News 13's Brad Rogers. Maine State Trooper Douglas Cropper was on a routine traffic stop when his day went from routine to heroic. On 295 near Forest Ave this June, he spotted an elderly man driving the wrong way on Maine's busiest highway, a terrible accident just waiting to happen. He says his only option was to chase him down before he got to Tukey's Bridge. They're all blind curves and blind hills as you're coming around corners and coming over Tukey's itself and one car's coming the wrong way. You're never going to see it. Quickly show the video. Before receiving his award, he and others watched the videotape from inside his patrol car as he raced down Marginal Way. Usually we would stay in the right lane of traffic and just get people to move over, but there wasn't enough time for it. The Franklin Arterial on-ramp was his last shot. You can see him quickly on the left-hand side, still going northbound right. Right there. Ah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, and then these people were clearing before. out of the way, and I knew the only shot I had was to beat them to the crossover. Right before I, I hit the crossover, I just, you know, said a little prayer, don't hit me in the door. And my initial thought was to ram them, that I was going to have to, that it was going to be that close. And um, just by luck, sheer luck, I think I just beat them to the spot and stuck my nose out there. Trooper Cropper raced ahead of the car. And U.S. Representative Shelley Pingree honored Trooper Cropper for his active heroism. Trooper Cropper says he was simply doing his job, but it's my belief that he went above and beyond to protect lives and that he saved many in the process. Trooper Cropper says he's just glad no one got hurt. So were his parents. He was very brave. I wouldn't have had trouble doing it, I know. Everything came out right. No one hurt. I don't think there's anything I could have done differently. In Portland, Brad Rogers, News 13. Now, Trooper Cropper's heroic act is now part of the congressional record. Troopers believe the elderly man from Scarborough got on I-295 going the wrong way, either in Scarborough or possibly South Portland. Flags flying at half-staff today in honor of a Maine soldier killed in Afghanistan. Sergeant First Class Aaron Henderson was laid to rest today in his hometown of Holton. Henderson was wounded by an IED on September 30th. He died the following day. Henderson served with a special forces group out of Fort Campbell, Kentucky. On the political edge tonight, a new poll in Maine's U.S. Senate race shows an even bigger lead for Angus King, but Charlie Summers says he's not buying it. First, let's show you these numbers. This poll by Maine-based SMS Pan Atlantic Group shows Angus King up on Charlie Summers by more than 20 points by about a 2 to 1 margin, with Democrat Cynthia Dill way back at 12 percent and 14 percent undecided. Now, Charlie Summers, who is campaigning today with New Hampshire Senator Kelly Ayotte, takes issue with the poll, pointing out it was actually conducted more than two weeks ago and just released today. His campaign also points out that a public policy polling poll from the same time period had less than a 10-point gap, and he says other polls have it closer to 12 to 14 points. So I, I put no uh, credence in the poll at all. You know, there's a reason the Democrats are spending $2 million against me up here. There's a reason that Michael Bloomberg in New York is raising money for Angus King. It's not because they don't have anything else to do. It's because they know that we're coming and we know that, that we're going to overtake them. Hey, this is a race. It's an important race. Now, meantime, the major candidates in this race held another debate today. This one up in Lewiston. By the way, you can catch the final debate of the season right here on News 13. That's coming up Saturday, November 3rd, just three days before the election. On the Crime Watch tonight, police arrest a Sacco man and charge him with several crimes after an incident this morning in Scarborough. 26-year-old Aaron Guzzi was arrested after allegedly waving a gun at a woman in traffic this morning. Scarborough police say they caught up with him a short time later and allegedly found six ounces of marijuana in the vehicle in which he was riding. A woman says who police say was driving that car was not charged. Now, your weather authority forecast with Charlie DePresti. Hey, welcome back everyone. Another lousy day here in vacation land. We had cloudy skies. We never broke into any sun and of course we had the showers move in a little earlier than anticipated. Now I'm happy that the sun will return tomorrow. I think you are as well. We'll have breezy conditions. 
Temps tomorrow will again struggle to get out of the 50s. Let's take a look at that three day forecast. Upper 50s tomorrow. The only fly in the ointment for tomorrow will be the wind gusting at times 25 to 35 miles per hour. Get your rakes ready. We'll have to rake up the leaves after this one. Showers on Friday morning, probably late morning through midday as a strong cold front moves through then partial clearing. It will turn colder. Highs will struggle to get much above 50 degrees on Saturday. And yeah, that's not a typo. I think we start in the 20s early Saturday morning. OK, as far as showers go, we're looking at some uh, pretty hefty showers moving through northern York County and southern Cumberland County. Let's zoom in on that one right in there. All over toward Biddeford and Saco, you're looking at a pretty good shower that's moving up into the Scarborough area in the next oh, 10 or 15 minutes. North of Portland, over toward Falmouth, Yarmouth, Cumberland, heading back into uh, to the west, actually, toward Gorham, even Wyndham. You're looking at a few showers there as we head up to the radar site there in Gray, New Gloucester. You're looking at a few showers there. So on and off showers through about midnight or so. And after that, we'll have clearing sky guys and windy conditions. Tomorrow is going to be a nice day. It's just going to be a windy day. There's the cold front. You can easily make it out. It's situated right in here, moving through central New York State, all the way down to Pennsylvania, portions of West Virginia. Now behind this, the wind is going to shift over to the west. That's going to clean us out. Nice westerly wind will not only clear us out, but it's going to cool us off. This is one of two cold fronts that will be affecting us over the next three days. In fact, let's get a little bit closer. I'll take you hour by hour right through the first part of the weekend. Say goodbye to tonight's rain that will be gone by tomorrow morning. The front will be east of us. Notice a few snow showers over the higher elevations in the mountains over toward the presidential range and a few areas in the western mountains of Maine. It could pick up an inch or two of snow there, mainly over 2,000 feet in elevation. 7 o'clock, we're starting the 30s and 40s. Afternoon highs tomorrow should easily warm into the mid to upper 50s. It's going to be a nice day, but again, the big story tomorrow will be that wind out of the west gusting over 30 miles per hour. More clouds roll in late tomorrow night. Here's the real cold front. This one means business. A round of showers moves through probably late morning on Friday. I think it clears the coast just in time to see a little sunshine return during the afternoon. Friday afternoon looks okay. It's just going to turn cooler and windy again. Notice snow showers, more widespread snow showers head back in the mountains. A few more inches of snow are possible over 2000 feet in elevation. Overnight lows Friday night to Saturday morning are going to be quite cold, certainly by October standards. That's right, 20s to near 30 degrees to start the day on Saturday. That's about 5, 6 a.m. I expect some sun to dominate the forecast early in the weekend, but temps struggle to get above 50 degrees. OK, our next round of showers again Friday morning with a cold front after that. Next round of rain will be on Sunday. It's looking like a warm front will try to sneak its way through here, but might get hung up around here. So rain moves in on Sunday with rain moving out on Monday morning. So it's an up and down forecast here as far as the rain goes. Of course, today the rain came in a little bit earlier than anticipated and uh, tomorrow at least we'll have some sunshine, but we don't really have that perfect day in the seven day forecast. At least we have sun tomorrow. It's going to be windy, right? Mm -hmm. Right. All right. That's the way it goes. I guess that's one of those weeks. Yeah, Thanks, Charlie.